work smarter, not harder, with a super simple method of de-rusting and degreasing parts. Now I'm going to show you how to go for the neat results on the right when starting with the items on the left in a few simple steps showing you the before and the after and the apparatus we use to do it. Here we have a rubber tumbler, rock tumbler. See it's full of rocks of all things because that's part of what we're going to use to do this little trick method of doing this. This is a fairly good sized tumbler. In a moment I'll show you the actual tumbler itself and you'll see that it's a little dirty but we'll explain that when we get there. But the tumbler bin here, this is an all rubber one as I said. And you can see I've got a little bit of water in there right now, not enough, and a bunch of decomposed granite from the driveway and a bunch of other rocks, different sizes. They're in there. And all we're going to do is add what's necessary to this to make those parts turn out great. Now the tumbler I have here, about nine inches across, about four and a half inches deep. It'd be better to have a larger one the next time I get one. I've had this one about seven years. I'll probably go for one that does about 15 pounds worth of material because car parts, when you want to do a bunch of them, do get to weigh a fair amount. With the smaller one, but it's much larger than the early ones I had, you have to watch how much you can do at a time. So you're going to do multiple loads. So we're going to put some parts in here that we're actually going to tumble. These, for example, are actually connecting rod bolts, all greasy. But we're not just going to put them connecting rod bolts. We'll have other things. It works best to use different sizes of items so that they're not all one size. They'll actually clean up better. And I'm not going to put this one in right now. He's a brass part. Yes, you can tumble brass parts, but I don't want to put brass parts with those big bolts in there. Not a good idea. So we'll skip those for the time being. The big washer. Some of these, as you can see, are also quite rusty. That's actually very rusty. A lot of these are from the internals on a Kissel 895 engine. And so they're just terribly greasy and dirty. And there are other ways to do that, but I don't want to work that hard. So we'll put a bunch of parts in here. As you can see, I am putting in smaller pieces, some washers, etc. Now, I'll tumble all the stuff that comes off the car usually doesn't mean everything will ultimately be used. This is one way to find out if you get bad lock washers because they'll actually break in the process and you just throw them away. Here's a part I want to get in here. This is the actual button off the end of the camshaft. Here's another part that's interesting. This goes on a valve lifter assembly. You need to run that through. So that gives me a number of parts in here. And like I said, I'm not going to overload it. I'm going to put this bunch in because I'm using the big bolts. When you use big bolts, you want to put in less parts. You can actually put in more parts if you were just using smaller pieces because they won't tend to flail against the cap. And the cap on this one is only retained by an outside uh, O-ring. I'll show you that in a moment when I put it together. That's probably enough pieces for now for this one. Now we're going to add the real secret ingredient. Lots of Dawn dish soap. And I said Dawn. You need to get that brand. That's the brand they always use to clean up animals when they have an oil spill. That's why you want to use it. This stuff works better than anything. It's going to work better than Simple Green. It's going to work better than the Purple Power. And it's going to work better than anything else I've ever found. Dawn dish soap, a lot of it. Now we're going to add the water. And one thing when I'm doing this, it takes more time for me to explain this than it actually does take to do it in the first place. So this is taking me longer than normal. If I was just doing it not having to talk about it, I'd already been done. But I want to show you exactly how to do it. So you can see I've got about one third full. I'm going to add a little more water than that. Then I'm going to put the top on. Back with the rest of the water. I usually fill it so it's about half to two thirds full with media. In this case, the rocks out of the driveway and the parts, dish soap, and the water. Now I'm going to put the lid on here. That's actually the outside. I don't care if the outside's dirty. Fits into a little lip here in the rubber. I'm going to work it away around. 
And as I said, I've had this one probably seven years. It's getting towards the end of its useful life. I'm going to go to a more serious one probably. You see I stretch the little band around. That's all set to use. Next thing I'm going to show you is I'm going to bring the little tumbler over here and explain a couple things about it. Here's the tumbler sitting in the tray and you can see there's some mess, etc. That's because if you overload this, your tumbler top could come off. That's also why I put it in an old cake pan and I put a towel under it and let all the stuff, if anything, fall into the tray. That's a safety measure that I use. These little O-rings that are used to drive it, you can get a hold of those, they're not a big deal. And to tell you, over here on the side, I'll have to wipe it off, and I'll tell you what brand this actually is. Now off camera, I happen to clean off the area. And believe it or not, the name is underneath the motor. It's a T-Square Products AR-6 for a model, AR-6. Switched out the towel, put it back in here. I'm not too worried about the rest of this. The reason I switched out the towel is because it was a little damp from the last running. That's in case anything leaks out, etc. So we'll put the case up here. And you notice it'll give you a slight leak. If this leaks a lot, you've got a piece of grit in the, your groove and you'll have to actually empty that and start it up. It's going to sound like that, so it's nice to keep in the garage or some place isn't going to bother somebody. Usually run it 24 to 72 hours for parts. At 24 hours, I'll usually open it up and they may well be done. If they're super greasy, I'm probably going to change out the water and add fresh Dawn dish soap at that point. If you're just dealing with rust and the really rusty parts, sometimes they're the ones that are going to take a little bit longer than you expect because this is going to take all the rust off given enough time and provide you have enough variance in your media that you're using. So we're going to let this run 24 hours and then we're going to come back and we're going to show you what the results are of the parts that come out of it. Here we have the tumbler, busy for approximately 24 hours, as I told you, kind of noisy. What we're going to do is we're going to open it up and see what our results are so far. I always like to work over the shop sink, and as you can see, it's dirty as you would expect. Your foam comes out kind of gray usually, especially if you've been getting rid of old oil, grease, etc. What we're going to do is we're going to dump this into the sink. Mostly this is foam at this point. There's obviously some liquid, but it's mostly turned to foam. And I'll take a fair amount of water foam and mess that we've got. You can kind of see down in here, rinse off one. There's the results. After approximately 24 hours in the tumbler, there's what you get. I rinse them all off and I set them over here on a towel and I'll pat them dry a couple of times. Being in Arizona, we don't have as much humidity as other people, although this is monsoon which means our humidity is up, still be considered low by most people. But you want to get the water off of them so you don't get flash, flash rust at this point. So just gradually go through and I'll empty this all out and be back with you in a moment. There they are, the finished parts, 24 hours in the tumbler. As I said, sometimes up to 72, depending on what you've got, how rusty, how dirty, how oily. And sometimes I'll switch out the water with fresh water and fresh Dawn dish soap. Be sure you get them dried off. I've padded some of these a couple times. There's still some moisture I'm going to get off of them. Probably put them on another fresh towel so they can dry. It is the darn easiest way you're going to find a cleaning parts. One of the few negatives you come up with is you see there are a few little rocks that get caught in some places like in a castle nut. Pop those out with a screwdriver and everything's just fine. I happen to have an entire Dole pineapple juice can here, just full of these things. If you know how big that pineapple juice can is, you know a lot of it's been done. We can go through and do all the parts, small parts on a car this way. Much easier than anything else. Keep in mind that you'll find on our channel 
lots of interesting things all the way from how-tos like this to in-depth information on various cars, places, etc., and even sometimes a recipe. We love it if you subscribe to the channel, like the videos, and we really like comments. We try to answer all the comments we get. And to be really honest, if you got a question, put it in the comments. We'll try to give you an answer right there, so because there's probably somebody else who wants to know the same thing you want to do. Keep us in mind for future more interesting videos to come. Bye for now.